Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of uh, Explode Your Expert Business Show. This is the show for coaches, speakers, and trainers who want to make a difference, make an impact in the world, and grow their business at the same time. My name is Simone Vincenzi. I'm your host, uh, the co-founder of GTEx. And um, uh, we give different episodes as part of this, uh, of this podcast. Sometimes you have a no- solo episode when we share some of the behind the scenes of what we do here at GTEx. Sometimes we share client stories and case studies so you can learn from them. And other times we have a guest expert uh, to share some of the behind the scene of what they do and what makes their business successful. And that's the case today because we are going to talk about creating incredible affiliate launches. So stay tuned. But before we get started, remember that uh, one of the best ways to grow your coaching and speaking business is to be seen and to be known in your industry. If you are invisible, good luck. That, that's all I can say. <laughs> so that's why we have created a, a database for you with more than 700 podcasts uh, and blogs and publications that you can reach out to to get known in your field, to build your profile and expand your audience. We have done the hard work for you because who likes to do databases? Well, I mean, I know a few people, but not many coaches are, love doing databases. So we've done the hard work for you. Uh, All you've got to do is to scroll down on the show notes uh, or the link in the comments and then get it right now. It's called the Ultimate Publicity Bundle and get it right now. So it is time now to introduce our guest uh, for today. Uh, She's a multi-seven-figure business strategist who makes 90% of her money through passive or semi-passive income streams. In one launch alone during the global pandemic in 2021, she made 2.5 million in a week, earning 1 million pounds in the first hour of sales. Boom shakalaka. After a tough childhood spent in social housing, uh, she went uh, to have a successful career in law, banking and entertainment industry and their background in overcoming obstacle has helped mold her into a bold straight talking coach who is never afraid to be an authentic and outspoken truth teller she's been featured on bbc women's hour try she's a tribe global contributor she's been featured in the telegraph psychology magazine the guardian fast company forbes oh, without further ado let's welcome the one and only lisa johnson hey lisa how are you doing today hi i'm good thanks for having me uh, it's, it's a pleasure. We've been uh, we've been uh, having a conversation over Messenger. Probably was that I think since uh, March uh, twenty twenty one or something like that. Maybe. Even before that, I think. Yeah, um, it's been a while now. Like, but you know, it's like with these things, like the time all like merges in in one. It so does. Uh, but no, we started talking before before we go into talking about affiliates and creating incredible affiliates. You got to tell us. You went on a private jet to Barcelona. <laughs> And you told me just before, like behind the scene, well, where, how was that experience? Yeah. Was it, what was that for? Tell us. It, it was pretty cool. Um, it's not the kind of thing I normally do. I'm quite a down to earth kind of a person. Um, but I wanted to treat the people that like were the top sellers in my affiliate this year because they did such an amazing job. And so I decided to charter a private jet to take them for lunch in Barcelona and to do a bit of shopping, um, which was awesome. It was just such a fun day yesterday. It feels very strange to be back in the office after that experience. You know what? There are some some experience sometimes that uh, that we have uh, and, and we were talking where we do one thing and now we can't look back. <laughs> so how what is uh, this experience? Because I know that the reason why you hired a jet and you're taking your affiliates out is because of the launch we're talking about the 2.5 millions that the launch made how has that experience changed you as a person i'll be honest not many experiences do change me as a person i pretty much stay the same person i was 20 years ago that i am now um but it just makes me realize how much i love doing things with other people that have been there for me. And I think it's really important that we do those kind of things. Um, It was great to, it wasn't actually just the people that made the 2.5 million. We also took the people that made the 1.7 million a few months before that on my, Mm -hmm. my other launch. And so we took them all with us. And it's just so great to see these people that have been so loyal to your business and really helped you out um, get something back. And I know that they make money from the affiliate launch and that kind of thing, but, you know, there's more to it than that. 
But what they will remember is the experience. Yeah. What we I... remember is like that money comes and goes, but yeah. those experiences, as long as we have a, a memory, <laughs> then <laughs> it, it's something that, stay, that stays with us. So uh, now you talked about uh, 1.7 million, 2.5 million. Uh, tell us a bit more about your background and how did you end up into the affiliate world and to doing affiliate marketing? Because I know that a big success part of the success of your launches were actually the affiliate context that you were running. So let's start from the beginning. Oh God, you don't, we really don't want me to start from the beginning. I'll start from five years okay, ago. Okay, we have, we have about like five <laughs> minutes for this segment of the podcast. So uh, yeah, <laughs> so, it's been in five minutes. Oh, oh, <laughs> I only started my business four and a half years ago. And so I'm fairly new to this online world, but I started helping people grow businesses simply because I'd had a business before in wedding planning. And so was just teaching people what I learned and um, set up this strategy company to help other people make money online and, and to, you know, all the usual basics of business really. But in the first year of that business, I was completely shattered. I was doing one-to-one -one work and, I have twin boys and I wasn't seeing them at all. And so I um, thought to myself, there must be something more than this. And that's how I stumbled across passive income. So I changed my life in that first year. The first year I was working 80 hours a week and I was earning around 220,000, which is really good for your first year in business. And I knew that, but I didn't feel successful because I was shattered. Yeah. And so I started adding these passive income streams in that I'd learned about. And by the end of like, by the beginning of year two, I was then uh, working about 30 hours a month and earning over a million. And since then it's just changed everything because I then realized that's what I needed to be teaching people. I want people to have a, a freedom lifestyle. So started teaching them passive income and was doing launches, just normal launches. And you know how launches go. You do one and you make 80,000, the next one 120. And I was going up each few months doing another launch when, as my audience grew. And last April, 2020, I was just about to launch and the pandemic hit. And I was like, oh crap. <laughs> like, no, everyone was saying no one's gonna buy anything. Yeah. Everyone's in panic mode. I was like, I'm going to try it anyway. Yeah. And so I did a launch, um, of the program and kind of told people like, now you really need to make, make passive income because you're not gonna be able to go out and do your other jobs. And it worked and we made um, 360,000 pounds on that launch with just me. I had no staff or anything like that at this point. So we were doing around, you know, just over a million, but with just me. And then I thought after that one, what about if we use affiliate launches. I'd heard about affiliate launches mainly from people in the US who have coached me before. And I'd been part of Selena Sue's affiliate launch and I'd loved being a part of it. I was her top salesperson. And so I thought, well, no one's really doing that in the UK. People are doing like a really tiny version of it, like a small version, but no one was doing the big affiliate launches. And I thought, well, why not? I knew that I couldn't do it on my own. So I took on an ops manager and said, like, this is what, what I really want to do this year. Um, and so we started and we got to work. And in 2020, we did our very first affiliate launch. I had no more people in my audience than I'd had in April. It was mm -hmm. the same number because I wanted to test if an affiliate launch done the way I wanted to do it, which was a bit different to any I'd ever seen, would work um, and would give me more money than I'd had before. Well, it really worked, and we made 1.7 million. And that's so a big then, jump. That's that's a, a that's huge, huge jump. Increase. And the only difference was we used affiliates. We still used 10,000 pounds in ad spend, which is exactly what we'd used in the April. So then I thought, I wonder how much we could stretch this if we tweaked some of the things we did in the affiliate launch um, and do things a bit differently rather than using big names. Let's do things differently. Mm -hmm and see where we get to. So we did that a few months later, um, 2021 in June, and we had a 2.5 million pound launch. And I realized that we'd, we'd worked it out, like it was working and I started teaching other people to do it in their launches and they started making money, like tripling their money. And so I was like, okay, we seem to have come upon a formula, but the thing that I was most proud of in all of this is that quite a lot of the affiliate launches I'd seen 
had been done without much integrity. Mm. Um, you know what affiliate launches are like. It brings out the worst in, in some people. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. And uh, where you have, so what do you mean? Uh, what do you mean when they are done without integrity? Because some someone that is listening here, if they have done affiliate launches before, they might have context. But if they have never done it, then right. it so might be- things. Yeah, I understand things I had seen in some affiliate launches that I had watched o- over the years are lying to people about what they need. For instance. You can make you can have a course and make money you don't need an audience um things like uh okay we're closing at this time the launch is closing at this time and then suddenly we're opening it again because a few people asked us to for another three days like just bait you know the kind of sleazy stuff that we've been seeing in affiliate launches since the end of time or you Um, have uh, sometimes uh, other affiliates that go in and steal someone else's client uh, because say oh why i know you were going to buy from that person but if you buy from me i'm gonna give you this extra thing and so the other person does all the work and you get paid exactly there's a lot of things behind the scene that are happening for people that are not part of that world there definitely is and also just things like you know, hey, this is my best mate, such and such, come and buy his program, when actually you know that they don't even get on in real life. It's just a a whole model of people using each other for affiliate launches and to keep themselves at the top. I decided we didn't want to do that. And so we changed things a lot. We decided, A, to only use people that were either people that we knew personally and were very close with, Mm -hmm. or people that were, had done the program. Mm-hmm. And so they knew it inside out because they'd already done my one to many program. And so we had about 250 applications. We took on around 120. Mm-hmm. Um, and out of those, over 87 made sales, it was like 87 to 89. That's made sales. insane. Insane because we chose the right people. And those people yeah. that their audiences, most of them had audiences of under 300 people. Yeah. There were a few that had bigger, but most of them were tiny audiences, but they were passionate about what the program had helped them do. And we knew that's a different way than getting all of your, you know, your biggest buddies that have the big lists and all of that kind of thing. But we thought we'd take a risk on it because I think that instead of just sending out emails to people, people that have done your program care. They're loyal to you because you've helped them. So they're more likely to shout. They go above, they go above and beyond they mm-hmm. put their word on the line. Uh, they can. Uh, uh, they are willing to make personal phone calls to their friends or people that they want to get involved. It's like yeah. hey, you, you need to get it. And that the big name was never going to do that. Or do it. No. And so that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. People were like really putting themselves out there. But we also only chose affiliates that had the same values integrity wise as us. So we, mm-hmm. for a month beforehand, decided to train the affiliates on launching in our style. And one of the things we trained them on was integrity. And we said, we are going to shout from the rooftops that we do not want people doing this this course if they're gonna get into debt doing it. Mm -hmm. We don't want people doing it if they're at the beginning of a journey and there's no way they're gonna stick to it because they don't have the time to do it. We were putting out everything that we had seen and making it very clear that's not who we were. We were turning away people and I told my affiliates they had to do this as well. Um, turning away people if we thought there was a better course out there for them in their circumstances for example quite a lot of people came to us who were wanted to go into corporate and I know much better people that can do that than me um, rather than take their money and so we turned over 100 people that wanted to join and told them to go to other coaches who were competitors so we did it in integrity and it still made us a ton of money and Um I'm, I'm interesting to see also in terms of like the, the model, what was your criteria in terms of selecting them? Because as someone that might think about, you know what, I've got clients, I've got people that have been through my courses, I've got friends, I've got people that I can tap into my network and that are really close to me and I trust them, they trust me. So that this model would be perfect for them. Yeah. What is the criteria in terms of like, finding that affiliate one you mentioned already is the integrity and the culture of it yeah um the second was had they launched before we knew that it was going to be too much of an ask to try and get people to launch for us who had never launched any for anything for themselves so Mm -hmm. we wanted people that had launched something at least once and it doesn't have to be that way like if you're doing your own affiliate 
launch, you might decide not to have that and to train your people to launch mm -hmm. instead. Um, and that's definitely one way of doing it. The third was, did they have a loyal audience? It doesn't matter if there was 100 people in there. Mm. Were those 100 people engaged and loving everything that they were putting out there? Because, yeah. you know, an audience of 100 people is worth, of engaged people is worth a million of, of non-engaged. Yeah. Um, so that's what we were looking for. And then we were looking at, had they done the course before? And if they hadn't done the course, had did they know enough about me and my ethos which is quite different in this industry to be able to sell in the way that i would sell and that's what we looked for and so some people did get turned away we had somebody that had over a hundred thousand people on their list that got turned away because they weren't a good fit and the reason there is power in saying no actually for for people to say they're listening right now and saying you know what i'm just watching and they're saying but why are you turning those people away like this could be more money as well and you could have helped actually even more people by getting them in but the reality is that when you're turning people away actually you become even more attractive and yeah. I, i'm not sure if you would have made more money by not turning people away <laughs> I, think that, I think as well that there's yes you can always make more money there are lots of ways to make more money but you have to make more money in a way that feels right to you. And for me, and that's in lots of different ways for lots of different people. But for me, I want to be able to make lots of money in a way that allows me to sleep at night, which means that every single partner I use has to have the same integrity ethos. They can't tell me they have integrity. And then I see stuff out there that they're doing, like run to the back of the room tactics and, and that kind of rubbish, because then they don't have the ethos. And I won't be able to sleep at night if I think that they're selling my program to someone in a not yeah. ethical way. Um, so to me, I'd rather have less money anyway and be able to and sleep. And be able to sleep at night and say, no, that's, that's why we connected so well, yeah. because uh, I've turned down quite a few opportunities uh, and uh, I've, I know what makes me happy and the way I want to run the business and uh, the people that I want to serve, the communities that we want to build, what we stand for. And I remember once I did uh, a speaking gig for a very large promoter, which I'm not going to name. And uh, I never resonated with them. And, uh, but uh, I took it anyway because it was the opportunity. Yeah. And I remember that uh, while I was on stage, I felt like a fraud. It was the very first time. And, uh, you know, like I love, before I was running live events, it was, my life was speaking on stage. I was running 200 events a year. It was my thing. And that was the very first time where I felt, I don't want to be here. Yeah, I, I get that. And uh, that has been my lesson. That has been my lesson. And it's like, okay, actually it wasn't a company that was respecting for some of the practices that they were using, but being uh, there as a speaker for me meant, uh, you know, you have made it. Even though actually it was like, no, actually it's been probably one of the worst gigs. Like I did my thing, yeah. but because I was there and I'm always going to perform, but inside it's not I was alignment yeah if inside i the first year of my business i became an affiliate for somebody that if i'm completely honest i didn't agree with their integrity practices but i thought hey i'm new like i want to take these opportunities this person is asking me and so i became an affiliate and i must have looked so uncomfortable trying to sell this thing that i didn't believe in to make money i lost a quarter of my audience because of it, the trust went and it was a lesson learned. I knew that I would never again try and promote, promote something that I didn't believe in just be, just for money. You know what, it, it is a now, I think we are going into the another part of this conversation, which is around the mistakes that people, common mistakes that people can make, you know, like from your hindsight, maybe, maybe like mistakes that you have made. And we already started talking about promoting people that you're not aligned with or getting affiliates that are not aligned with you. That's already one mistake. So what are some of the biggest, most obvious mistake that maybe you have made or you've seen other people making that in the affiliate space? I don't even know where to start the amount of mistakes. Right, like give me like the top three, top three. Top okay. Three. Um, one, not doing my due diligence on suppliers. Like I used to just think that if everybody else was using a supplier, they must be good. And in the first year, I lost 27,000 pounds to a Facebook ads manager in two weeks 
because I hadn't done my due diligence. That wasn't on them. That was on me. I didn't do my due diligence and, and check things out properly. And I have learned from not doing that well so many times I've now learned to be so good at due diligence mm -hmm. and we learn from everything don't we every mistake we make is a learning thing anyway mm -hmm. um the second thing the biggest mistake I made at the beginning was trying to sell things without having an audience like you need an audience just it doesn't matter how great your offers are or how much time you're putting into making these amazing things if you don't spend double that amount of time growing an audience you don't have a business yeah so that's definitely the second mistake I made. Um, I think the third, I mean, I'm honestly trying to root through at least 20 mistakes I've made to give you one more. Um, I think the third mistake that I have probably made is trying to hire people in my business that are the same as me. Because we automatically, when we look for people to help us in business, go, well, let's find people that are a bit like us. Then you, that's the opposite of what you want. You want someone that is the opposite of you in all ways <laughs> so that the things that you're already good at, they don't do. And the things that you're not good at, they are good at. And also get people that challenge you. And at the beginning, I got people around me that were yes people that didn't challenge me. And it was a mistake. And I noticed it in my business. Like now I have people around me that challenge me constantly. I don't think what you're doing is the right thing. For instance, I just got a book deal. Mm -hmm. And two, there were two offers on the table for this book deal, both brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I started going for the one that was giving me more money, more fame, more publicity, TV shows. And the other one really cared about the book, really cared about the business. But my head went, oh, shiny things. And my staff went, oi. Hey, back, back, back. Back to earth. <laughs> yeah. Remember why you're even doing it in the first place. And they challenged me and they were right. And I went with the other book publisher. But before, if you don't have that, you can make some mistakes. You know, you need people to keep you grounded and, and bring you back to why you're doing things. Yeah, that's uh, that's so important. I'm, I'm thinking when you when you mentioned about the um, hiring people that are, or surrounding yourself with people that are similar to you, that's been the story of me and my business partner because uh, I mean, we started our business where we were young, naive, and we didn't know anything about business. We were both 23. And we're like, yeah, we're going to conquer the world. Uh, came out of Tony Robbins training, and that's that we're flying. We're literally flying. And uh, we connected, we became friends. And then when the opportunity came, we decided to start a business together. Now, many people don't know, but Ben and I, we are still business partners. But throughout the years, and now we have been uh, in business for officially eight years, not officially nine, because uh, we registered a company a year later. And uh, uh, it, there were a lot of fights. There were yeah. a lot of fights. There were a lot of struggles because it, we wanted both to fit in the same place, but the business needed us to do different things. So there were a lot of points where he, had, he was unhappy, I was unhappy. And the moment where we made the business work is that when we said, you know what, you run another side of the business, I'm running my side of the business. So literally now, well, now we have seven companies within our group of companies, but the first one was the separation of I'm in charge of GTEx and the training is in charge of the corporate space and the corporate contracts. And then we were fine. That is a great relationship now because we can be friends. We can support each other by I run my stuff. Iran you is your stuff. <laughs> it was not complete. Like it was very difficult to complement each other in that way. And yeah, and we joke around it. And I'm happy that he never punched me in the face because he used to do mixed martial arts, and I was definitely going to get the wrong end of the stick there. Uh, so, <laughs> right, it, it is time to 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 wrap up the this interview, Lisa. It's been great, and definitely, um, I know you're uh, launching a, a course and also resources around running affiliate launches. So where there are the 17 other mistakes that you might not have mentioned. Yeah, I'll tell you them all. <laughs> <laughs> they might be there. So if someone wants to reach out to you, connect with you, learn more about affiliate launches, uh, what's the best way? The easiest way is on Instagram where I'm there at Lisa Johnson Strategist. You will see some behind the scenes stuff on my stories. Um, I'm constantly putting stuff on there. None of it's curated. It's just real and raw. Um, so yeah, come and say hi to me in my DMs on Instagram. 
or Aliza Johnson Strategist. The link is in the show notes, so make sure you check it out. And actually, right now, while you're watching, while you're listening, just scroll down or go in the comments, check on the Instagram account and follow Lisa and then see uh, what uh, the content that she provides, jump in the story, say hi, because we will definitely, uh, she definitely want to uh, to get to know you and uh, also support you in this journey. So Lisa, uh, if we are to wrap up this uh, conversation in uh, like one final message, the conversation that we had today, what would your message be? I think the biggest thing is to realize that by using affiliates, you can triple your revenue in a launch because you're using other people's audiences and it's a win-win situation for both you and for them because they get to make passive income, you get to make more money. Ladies and gentlemen, Lisa Johnson. Lisa, thank you very much. You are a superstar. Oh, thanks for having me. All right. And... uh... Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for listening. I'm looking forward to seeing you next episode. And always remember that together we grow exponentially. Ciao.